Hey Health Junkies, it's time for The Health Fix. Join your host doctor, Janine Krause, as she gives you a dose of what you need to know and do right now to take control of your health from the inside out to rebel against aging, look damn good, fight stress, and laugh every day. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. And today I have a very special treat for you. I have my coach Meredith with me and she's also my friend, but she's my coach. I've talked about her a lot on the podcast and I really wanted to bring her in because my last podcast was all about mind and muscle connection and who better to have on than the master (laughs) of kind of guiding me through my journey each morning in terms of figuring out how I'm going to turn on certain muscles so I can get the best workout ever. So Meredith, say hello. Hi. And so we're going to giggle a lot because we got the dogs in here too. They did not want to leave. And so if you hear some panting, I promise it's not me. It's not Meredith. It's either my dog bear or my puppy Ryan here. And um, yeah, so it's it's going to be a real uh, day because it's uh, legit what happens in my office uh, when I've got the dogs hanging out. And really, I want you to be thinking about during this podcast, really, are you connected with your mind and your muscles? Have you ever even thought about it? For example, Meredith and I were just talking about how a lot of us will sit and we don't even know if we're sitting on our two butt cheeks. We don't even pay attention. We don't even know if like our shoulder blades are back against our chair in in proper positioning. So sitting upright. Most of us kind of got the little gangster lean. We're on one like butt cheek and the arms over to the side, you know, and and we kind of get that thing going on. And guess what that does? That causes pain in your back. And for some of us, we we tend to try to wear our shoulders as earrings, especially when we're stressed. And those bodies are irritated bodies. And we're going to talk a little bit about how that all plays in and why it's really important to start to get to know your body by just paying attention to your postures, paying attention to what you feel, actually opening yourself up to feeling your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your body. And the more connected you are, the more you can help with your mood, the more you can help with preventing pain, the more you can help with overall sense of well-being. So I wanted Meredith to come on today because she's really great at giving me super simple cues at the gym to help me to correct my posture, but also to help me with squats and, and all of the compound, you know, little difficult Olympic lifts that I never had much experience with prior to this lovely journey that I'm on. So Meredith, you've you've done a lot of research with all these simple cues. Yes. And right now we've been talking a lot about the feet and we were talking about pelvic floor. Mm. And so the feet in particular, you always talk about those four corners and you talk about paying attention to your feet and how it connects into a lot of different things. Now tell me about where you learned this and, and how you started incorporating it in and, and how we can help other folks that might be listening to this podcast to you know start with their feet. Okay, so we are going to get into our position here for how we work with the feet. So I'm standing up, and I'm just kind of feeling my feet and kind of working with it. And Meredith's kind of going to coach me through how to feel my feet and where to go from there. Okay, so to feel your feet, you want to feel all four corners of your feet. So you want to feel your heels. Okay. You got your feel in your heels? I feel them. Then your little toe and your big toe. All right? So now you're feeling all four corners of your feet pressed through the floor. Now that you have all four corners of your feet pressed through the floor, I want you to start thinking about your heels. Okay. All right? When you got your heels, when you're thinking about your heels, you want to think about pulling your heels together. Now, what do you feel when you pull your heels together? My butt squeezes. What? You're feeling your butt. That's good. You're feeling your core. Then, what you want to think about as you're pulling your heels together and driving your toes through the floor, do you feel that the arches of your feet are creating like a claw feeling? Yeah. Huh. That's you hanging onto the floor. Nice. <laughs> yes. All right. So, now that you have your feet... Um, grounded through the floor, and your glutes are active, you want to um, feel your hips pull forward over your heels. Okay. Got it. All right. Got it. Now that your hips are over your heels, um, you should feel your belly button. Ooh, yeah. That one's a tough one. I think for a lot of people, the belly button's hard to feel. Yeah. Yes. What do you, what kind of tricks do you have for getting to feel that belly button of yours? Um, For me, for feeling the belly button, it would be thinking about below my belly button. Okay. Right underneath my belly button. And then what I think about is almost like sucking in Mm -hmm. or pulling your belly button. I like to use the word pull because if you think about pulling, that will guide your attention to activate your core or to use your um, stomach versus 
sucking in. If you think sucking in, that engages your muscles very different than using the word pull. Ooh, that's a good point. Because I think a lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to suck my stomach in and that's going to help me with engaging my core. So that's not the case. No. Okay. So what are they doing when they suck in compared to like... Sucking in is just your lungs or, Ah. or I don't know if that's even right, but yeah, that's, you're not engaging your core if you're sucking in. You want to think about pulling. All right. Did you guys hear that? Pulling in, not sucking in. Yeah. Pull in that belly button. Pull. Yeah. So we've probably started over a little bit because so much has happened. And this is the thing when you're thinking about doing a movement, we've already thought about what, probably 10 different things. Yeah. We've been talking for well over 90 seconds. Mm -hmm. And I know for me and my attention, I've already forgotten about my feet while I've been talking about my belly button. So then I have to reroute myself back to my feet. It's very time consuming to be in like perfect form, right? Yeah. Okay, so we got our four corners, our little toe, big toe. Mm -hmm. Our heels are pressed through the floor. We got that claw feeling going in the arch of our feet. Our heels are coming together. Our glutes are engaged. We're pulling our belly button into our spine, pulling our hips over our heels. Now we should be feeling more upright, right? Yeah. Now when you're in this position, you wanna think of your shoulders down and back, or your elbows pulling towards your back pockets. Ooh, that's uh-huh. a good one. Ooh. Yeah, elbows to the back pocket. I have not thought about that one before. Yeah. You guys got that? All right, so now you're like standing up straight. And if you're doing that this with us, you're like there. If not, you better uh, rewind and, and try it all over yeah, again. and figure this out, how to stand properly. And then you want to think about your chin back mm-hmm. over your shoulders. Now think about your ears pulling up to the ceiling. Ooh, I even opened my rib cage a little on that one. Oh. Now you are standing upright, rooted through your feet. There you go. So we've got simple cues to kind of get you to figure out how to just start engaging with your body. And what's easier than standing? We all have to stand. Um, some people might not like it, but I have to admit that uh, it's it's more important than sitting, um, unless you're going to squat, and we'll talk about that later. But a lot of people have stand-up desks. And one of the biggest issues that I see with stand-up desks is people don't stand right. They're like doing the like hip out, hand on their hip kind of thing, more weight on the right foot or left foot, or they're like standing on one foot. I've seen this kind of tree pose thing going on when I've walked into offices with people at stand-up desks, or they've got their legs one crossed in front of the other. This is a big problem because you're not evenly distributing your weight. If you do that, now you're going to have muscles that are firing that are engaging and being strong, but then your other muscles are not. And most problems start in the pelvis. Mm -hmm. And if you're not putting your weight equally on each foot, then you've got some issues. And for me, I like to practice this every time I'm standing or if I'm Mm -hmm. waiting in line. Like, I usually get cued to stand more properly when I feel my back swaying. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also, if I feel any sort of pains in my body, if my hips are hurting, my neck's hurting, my shoulders are hurting, if I have any pain, I instantly think I must not be stacked correctly. And then I start with my feet and I work my way up. And then usually by the time I'm done, I don't feel hurt. I'm not hurting anymore. And that is so huge because I think a lot of people just for whatever reason in life, there's always some sort of ache and pain and they're like trying to figure, you know, it's driving them nuts. But if they only just worked on posture a little bit, they might be able to get rid of it. I don't know how many people have you heard say, oh, it hurts when I do this. And then quit doing that instead of, well, no, maybe it hurts while you're moving in that way because you're not moving in the correct form. So if you can just adjust form, then you wouldn't be hurting when you move that way. So it's like, no, that doesn't mean quit walking or quit reaching or quit lifting above your head or quit bending over. It means, hey, I have this really unique opportunity to feel my body in a new way. It hurts when I do this. What am I not stacking correctly? That's what it makes me think about. Ooh, that leads me into, you told me the story about vacuuming. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell me the story again, because you were like, oh, it hurts to do this. But then when you slowed down and thought through things, didn't hurt anymore yeah yeah so um i'm in physical therapy for my right shoulder i have a lot of issues and chronic pain and uh from an old injury and i just continued to move in ways to cause me less pain but not strengthening things in the way they needed to be strengthened so now i'm taking care of that now and um, i'm getting positive results and uh, one day when i was vacuuming the pushing and pulling of the vacuum really hurts my shoulder and it really hurts up into my neck so um i'm also doing hot yoga at the same time. This is a circle story. I love circle stories. Me um, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, my favorite movies, because they don't start in the beginning. <laughs> they start in the middle, start over here, finish somewhere. Like, yeah, whatever. Love Quentin Tarantino. I like to tell stories I can. Um, okay, so um, vacuuming really hurt, and I'm also doing hot yoga. And the reason why I bring up hot yoga is because when I started um, vacuuming, I thought, oh, um, I need to 
could breathe with my back knee, right? So I was breathing in and out as I was pushing and pulling. I see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, I was like, oh, my neck's hurting, so I need to brace myself. So I started bracing and pushing and pulling with more of my shoulder muscles. My neck started hurting way less, right? Because I was initiating the movement from the top of my neck. It was hurting less. So then I started moving further down. I'm like, oh, well, let me brace my core. <laughs> and I wasn't actually even really thinking about yoga while I was doing this, just the hindsight of it all. Thank goodness I put myself in yoga. So at a new way to hear my body. So then I started bracing in my stomach. And then my, my neck and shoulder hurt way less. Then I'm like, hey, I'm hurting way less. How about I move further down? I moved to my glutes. My neck started hurting way less. No way. I moved down to my quads. And by the time I got to my feet, I literally had no pain in my neck and my shoulder as I was pushing and pulling. And that was just like a huge aha moment of, oh my gosh, if I actually stacked my body as I'm intended to, I can have minimal to no pain. And how much have my life have I been navigating <laughs> with all these pains and never slowed down enough to think, hey, what are my feet doing? You know, because it's so far away, it's my neck. Right. It couldn't be something down in my feet. Well, of course, if I'm not balanced or stacked appropriately, I'm going to make so many different accommodations to be performing a movement, which could cause me the pain. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just excited about this. No, that's an absolutely huge. And, and that's important to think about because, yeah, a lot of people will come into my office and tell me vacuuming hurts so bad and they, they don't do it. They've now got maids. They've now got their husband or kids, whoever. I mean, I think I was brought up to actually be the maid in the house. Yeah, but anyway, that's a whole nother story for another day. But literally, I think there's so many people that quit taking care of household duties because they don't see the connection between feet and neck or feet and shoulder and kind of thinking through all of that chronic pain, which also leads me into another thing that you mentioned, slowing down. Mm. Because I think this is a big struggle and I've talked about it in the previous podcast. I was talking about I suck at slowing down. I want to do everything fast and I want to jump into workouts really fast and I want to do this and that. And what happens? I get hurt. And so by slowing back down, and I talked about this in my previous podcast to this one, so just keep telling you guys that you got to listen to that other one because if this is the only one you're listening to, you are missing out on the kind of preface to what I'm talking about today. But the previous podcast, I was talking all about how you could get such a better workout when you slow down and Meredith and I were just chatting about how pretty much everyone could possibly have a six pack if they all sat properly. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me also it's speeding up and going too fast. It's, it's more than just, uh, my attitude of wanting to do things quickly. I feel like with society, everyone we're designed to do more, do more, hurry up, do more. And then there's not enough time in the day. So to fit everything in a day that I need to get done, I have to make sacrifices have to cut corners and sometimes that means not feeling my body as it's navigating through the space and that's when I get into trouble um, so definitely slowing down is super important but also it's hard to slow down when we're conditioned to go fast you know not just with workouts but with everything I mean how am I supposed to to work get my studying done you know do my house chores walk my dog hang out with friends, do my meal prep, wash my vegetables, cook my vegetables. I mean, there's so much to get done in a day. So it almost feels impossible to be like, well, how am I supposed to stay rooted through my feet with every single activity I'm doing? Well, I can. That just means I get to, I just have to slow down and breathe and be mindful. I don't know. I was all over the place with that, but it just, it feels like we're really conditioned to want to do too much. Oh yeah. No, we're, we're absolutely in a society that moves way faster than we were programmed to, really. I mean, we're, we are programmed mentally now because we know we have to hurry up, do things fast. But in reality, if we back it up and look at it, we are still cavemen. And this fast-paced life, we get into poor postures. It's just like going to the gym and doing bicep curls wrong for like six weeks and then you end up with tendonitis. It's... It's kind of the same gig, and it's why we have so much back pain. It's why we have so much neck pain. It's because a lot of us have deconditioned ourselves. One, we're not working out, but two, we're not tightening our, our core. We're not supporting our core. We're not supporting our glutes. I think the number one thing I see in my office is core and glute weakness for a lot of people, and so 
like Meredith was saying before at the beginning of this podcast, feel your feet and squeeze your heels. Try to squeeze your heels together. Now, don't actually, you know, slide them on yeah, the floor no, and squeeze moving. them. Don't move them. Just actually keep them, you know, feel your four points. So the both sides of your heels, your big toe, your little toe. And then from that position of the feet being rooted in the ground, try to squeeze your heels together. Imagine that, that it's happening. And guess what? You're going to like take that pencil and squeeze it between your butt cheeks. I mean, if you really need to get a pencil out, I mean, hey. I've done it. Yeah, props are good. Props are good. I don't recommend potato chips because a lot of people <laughs> talk about potato chips, but that that's food abuse. Don't do that. Pencils are pencils are okay. Now, another big thing that has to do with our postures and how we move is, is something that I'm really starting to dive into. And Meredith is, and I talk a ton about it, is, is healing trauma through movement and also really diving into our muscles and how we can work on trauma. And I'll give you a little example from myself. Sometimes, and it seems to be Tuesdays. Tuesdays are my rough days. Um, don't know what that says about me other than Tuesdays are my first day of work. Maybe I'm anxious for work. Maybe I'm feeling a little nervous or whatever's happening um, since I take Mondays off. But Tuesdays at the gym, sometimes I need a little bit of a neurological massage. And what does that mean? I need to work on and slow down and I need to work on really engaging with my muscles so that I can get a deep burn and I can get that endorphin release because I feel like Tuesdays I wake up sometimes a little grumpy pants and maybe I want a longer weekend and the way that I've found to help with my mind is to really work on focusing on the muscles. Now the backstory on this and why Tuesdays probably are hard for me is because I'm coming off um, a couple years ago I worked in an environment um, same job you know always a naturopath acupuncturist but it was really traumatic. I worked a lot of hours. I wasn't treated very well. And it was a very stressful position. I think my body still thinks that every time I go into work for the week that I'm going to a battleground. Mm -hmm. And so Tuesdays for me are my, you know, get prepped to go to battle. And one of the ways that I help to reposition my mind, but also help to get me into a happy place and feel good about life is to get my workout, but also really to slow down because I've found that the more I slow down, the better burn I can get. And when I say burn, um, let me let me clarify my terminology for burn. It's not like I feel my muscles burning. The burn is more an endorphin release, much similar to what I hear a lot of runners talking about getting when they run and how good it feels. And I used to run. I'm a recovering marathon addict, and I've not felt as good as... I do now from all that marathon running. Now I feel a lot better slowing down, working with the weights and really just getting that neurological massage, meaning it's helping my, my nervous system to calm down and feel happy. And so Meredith has definitely helped me with this and especially helped me to have some words for it because I had some Tuesdays where I get in there and I get in some heavy weights and I couldn't do it. And I wasn't getting that feeling of release. And let's just say there's been some tears and it happens to a lot of folks, um, with workouts. I don't know what it is. I think it's just that the neurological release that you need. And instead of getting my endorphin hit, I, I got some tears. And Meredith was there to be like, it's okay. We're going to slow down. And so in talking with Meredith a little bit more about healing trauma and working with the muscles, I found that, you know what, there's something to this. And for me, it's my trauma of previous workplace. I love my job now, but it's, it's different. Um, th that, that trauma still lives in those muscles. And I've done a previous podcast about trauma that lives in the shoulders, trauma that lives in the hips. And so Meredith and I started talking a lot about it. And we talked about Meredith's shoulder, Meredith's neck, in terms of what kind of things live in there. But we also talk about, you know, other people at the gym. Now, we're not talking names, and we don't when we talk about it. We're just talking about, in general, people. Because we're both very curious individuals about why people feel certain ways, but also what's stuck in those muscles. And so, Meredith, tell me a little bit about how you started to explore the trauma and, and the mind trauma muscle yeah. connection. So, for me, from my experience, and uh, one reason why I love exercise is for what it does for my mind. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard the saying, uh, if I'm not the problem, there is no solution. So, uh, for me, not that I'm a problem, but I come from a long line of uh, mental health in my family. Um, and directly, uh, like my mom, and, uh, and also I come from a long history of not just my immediate family, but my ancestors of drug abuse, alcoholism. So I come from 
uh, just genetically, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that could make for me not to be a very high functioning individual. Um, lucky for me, when I was young, I got into sports. Um, with hindsight now, as an adult looking back, I can see that me participating in athletics that provided my body an outlet to relieve stress was a saving grace for me. And not to mention how my attention was guided, kind of like what you're talking about, like that mind-body connection of I had a different language and a different way to navigate my stress response system so that every time I heard a, a noise that startled me, it wasn't that someone was coming into the room it, or, you know, like if a basketball dropped, you know, like initially, like I always joke that when I get startled, it physically hurts because it does. It physically hurts when I get startled. Now as an adult and then learning about, you know, the way the brain works and um, just uh, fight or flight and all that stress stuff, I'm realizing that some of that actual physical pain that I'm feeling is from you know, previous experiences from when I was little. But me, as an adult, applying those systems to current situations doesn't really benefit me, right? So for me, how I end up handling the way that my mind works is by exercising um, vigorously to allow my nervous system, like I said, an opportunity to process stress in a new way so that I can behave different when stress comes up in my life. I eat um, really healthy. I try to eat real food. I try to eat lots of fruits and vegetables. I try to, I actually look up items that help different parts of my body function better. Um, because if my internal systems are functioning better, then my mind won't process that if my liver isn't working well that day, my mind wants to put words to it. So my mind will attach stress. My mind will tr attach depression. My mind will attach a vernacular that I'm used to that keeps me safe. I don't want to be safe in pain. I don't want to be safe in fear. I don't want to be safe in being a victim. I want to be safe in a solution. I want to be safe in an answer, and I want to be safe in action, right? I want to be behaving differently. Sometimes it's hard to think my way out of a new way of behaving, but it's a lot easier to behave differently. Um, I find through sports, through yoga, it puts my body in a scenario in which I get to behave differently, so then I get to think differently. Um, it doesn't help me to uh, react to my life with uh, mental health. So that's why I love doing exercising. Also to kind of tap into what you're saying and, and what I'm doing for my own self and what I believe for me through my experience is also I can heal old trauma by correcting um, movement patterns, just like how you brought up shoulder. Um, it's from an old injury, but also the reason why I probably hang on to it is it's, you know, shoulder, heart, um, depression, mental health. I'm, I'm fine being open and honest about this kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> A lot of what I know is going on with my shoulder, and, and lucky I'm open to this, I've been told repeatedly that it's in my head. Well, it's not in my head, but it is in my head in the sense of nerve endings, right? My nerves are fired up. They, they want to protect me from not doing certain movements so that I don't continue to injure my shoulder. However, I can fix those nerve endings by performing correctly, stacking my body how it needs to be stacked while I'm doing movements, as well as thinking differently about how I'm moving and why I'm moving and what I'm moving for. In all that, in the mind-body-soul connection, I'm actually able to heal old trauma, heal current trauma, feel better, because also if my, my body's feeling better, I'm going to be less stressed, right? Mm -hmm. And if I'm less stressed, then my mind won't be looking for patterns where there is no pattern to reinforce staying in a state of mental health. But um, and one last thing I want to touch on too, like in terms of movement patterns, if I have an old injury in my shoulder that came from yanking or, or whatever um but i'd like to even uh, step it back a little bit further from that but like uh, so my shoulders off so i squat incorrectly because my shoulders aren't in the correct position so my hips aren't in the correct position and i was never thinking about my feet before so i was never mm -hmm. rooted correctly so if i've spent 30 years squatting incorrectly based off of a shoulder injury that happened when i was a toddler mm -hmm. right this is all old old stuff right but if i can retrain my body how to squat correctly and move and tap into muscles that I just don't tap into because my body thinks the least path of resistance is to move in a way that's, you know, to keep my shoulders safe. I just keep reinforcing an old pattern of thinking. At least this is what I believe. So if I can fix my form and start moving correctly, I can actually help heal that old thought pattern that started this whole movement pattern in the first place. And I don't even need to remember what the original pain was. I don't need to remember what the original hurt was. I don't need to remember when I was two, I hit my head on the counter and that's why I walk funny, you know, but like as an adult, I definitely could have continued a movement pattern that I learned when I was a toddler, but as an adult, I can fix it. And if I can fix it as an adult, I can fix that original pain. That's how it works for me. 
And that's how it's presenting itself for me. And it's been successful so far. Me navigating my life in that way. I'm not saying that's how everybody needs to think. That's what works for me. Well, and I think there's some merit to it. I really do. Because even today, we were just talking about this earlier, how I was trying to open up my rib cage because when I was doing some snatches today, my rib cage just didn't want to open up to get the, the proper hip thrust to get the, the bar over my head. And so for those of you that don't do Olympic lifting, this is where you're taking a barbell with some weights on it and, and you're kind of pulling it up your body and then putting it up over your head. And so it's, you know, it's not an easy movement. It's a little complicated, but you can make it easier on yourself if you're moving properly. Well, my rib cage is tight because I don't take deep breaths when I start getting nervous or when I start, you know, when I sat, for example, I'm just coming off of a long road trip back and forth to Colorado and sat in, you know, the truck for too many hours. Let's just put it that way. Even though I was trying to do some some workouts while driving with the cruise control, which uh, stay tuned, you'll, you'll hear some more about my workouts in the car um, in another podcast. But um, my rib cage is really tight. And what that makes me think about is a lot of people, when I'm working on them with acupuncture, I feel along their rib cage, and their rib cage is so locked down. Well, our rib cage is, is the home of deep to that is the diaphragm. And most of us who are in fight or flight mode, which is most of us, or most of us that have had some trauma, we don't take deep breaths. We take very short breaths, which does not help at all to put you in a state of calm. If you remember from any of my previous podcasts, I talk about the five count inhale and the five count exhale, or even sometimes the seven count exhale to help with getting that rib cage open and, and relaxed. And today during our workout, I was trying to breathe too, to try to help with opening my rib cage. By the end of the workout, I actually did feel in, in our, our workout of the day portion, which is known as a wad, I did feel like, oh, wow, I can actually open up and I, I got that moving. And it really took just breathing and thinking about the muscle and the diaphragm that's that's under my lungs um, deep to my rib cage. And so the reason I brought this up is because I think part of us too, our big issue is that a lot of us have neck pain. A lot of us have like chest pain or back pain, upper back pain, because we're not moving our rib cage like we should. And so a whole nother aspect of rib cage, not breathing, stress, go to previous traumas. And now you've got three things you can put together that can be solved um, and, and calmed at least by working with breathing, which seems really simple and maybe too good to be true. But I've watched Meredith work with other folks in the gym and just watching her tell these simple cues and watching people become successful. We have one gal who who was squatting and her knees were knocking in and she was hurting herself over and over again. But once we got, you know, not we, I, I had nothing you to do with it. You participated. <laughs> I participated a little bit. I was like, those knees are bad. You got to help Meredith. Please come and help. But once, you know, she started working with Meredith more, we started to see a big change. In, and now she's like an amazing squatter. I mean, she looks good. Even her snatches today, I was looking, I mean, this is, this is huge. And so the reason I really wanted Meredith to come on is to, to help validate the, some of the things I say in terms of the muscles and the mind, because I think a lot of us have shut off from our bodies, um, especially the more trauma we've had, we just disconnect, right? We, we lose our self-worth. We, we decide that the, we're just, you know, not worth paying attention to. And so then we're, we're not paying attention to anything that happens with ourselves. And, and we start sinking into deeper holes. And one of my biggest, you know, things that I want to help folks with is, is the emotional trauma and pain, because my practice is highly, you know, heavy in pain management. And when I get to the root of why someone hurts, or I talk to them about what's happening, most of the time, there's some trauma involved. And if we can work that trauma out by yes, finding the right postures, but also moving properly. And I'm not talking like you guys have to go and do CrossFit. I never recommend that, you know, right off the bat for anybody. Yeah, it's fun, but I'm talking like just gentle body weight movements. I talked in my last podcast about Frank Madrano. Meredith actually introduced me to the, this fella, um, not personally, but <laughs> in terms of his material. And he, his stuff is calisthenic, just totally body weight exercise. But I found that by learning to engage a lot more on my core muscles properly, I'm actually getting more results than I did when I was just going in the gym and throwing around all my big muscles to show how much weight I could lift and, you know, hoo-hoo, look at me. But now I'm more psyched about the little movements. Mm -hmm. 
What would you say about that in terms of of the Frank the drama stuff you've played with? Well, for me, uh, moving forward with my fitness, uh, less is more, and I'm actually getting more uh, results, uh, better results, going slower, thinking about form and engaging my muscles and stacking them as they're intended to be fired. And what I mean by that, for those of you that don't know, um, and I'll relate it to my shoulder injury. When I perform movements that are overhead, prior to me being mindful of my body and what it feels like and listening to the pain, I initiated pressing overhead with the muscles in the back of my neck versus initiating overhead movements from like the back and the bottom of my shoulders, right? Um, So uh, with the slowing down, um, I guess definitely less is more. And that's what's been working out for me. Um, I don't need to go in and fly through a workout and get the fastest time anymore um, because I was compromising form. Right now I'm slowing down and working on form. And um, like I said, I'm getting better results. And eventually I'll be able to go quickly through workouts, but I don't want to do it sacrificing um, my body position. And also just to tap into what you're saying too, for everybody that's listening um, and how you said, you know, like you don't need to go to CrossFit, like whatever speaks to you as an individual, buy into what speaks to you and, and do it. Um, also with everything that I'm sharing, uh, when I think about all the different things that I've researched, like, especially when it comes to like Olympic lifting, whether you're doing Olympic lifting because you want to look good or you're doing Olympic lifting because you want to get strong, if you're taking your time and you're doing it right, both is going to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. So for me, my background, for me, why I exercise is because I want my mind to work right. But in that process, my body's looking good. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting healthier, like that whole mind body connection. So for everybody that's out there, it doesn't matter if you want to start exercising because you want to fix trauma. That's why I love doing it. I mean, I <laughs> want to be the high, highest functioning version of me that I can possibly be. And I get in my own way all the time. When I get in my own way, it's because of my, the functioning of my mind. You know, because I actually i am a good person. I perform well. My body moves well. But it's just like my thinking. My thinking gets in the way. That's why I exercise. But in that, I'm getting stronger, faster, better. Um, I have a six-pack. I you She know, does. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I'm kind of on the chubby side and I have a six pack, you know, like it's, it's, I don't know, but I guess what my point is, is it doesn't really matter if you're wanting to exercise to fix your mind, you're going to fix your mind. If you want to, if you're exercising because you want to look good, you're going to end up fixing your mind. I don't know, but like, it's all oh. inner, all interconnected. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's what I get excited about fitness. And, um, I didn't really answer your question at all about Frank Madrano. <laughs> I didn't really know how to answer it. We, we sweated, remember? I, oh, the yeah. other day, we were sweating like hell, and we weren't doing anything. Oh, really. yeah. Like, it felt like we were doing nothing. That's exactly so, right. We did three rounds, mm-hmm. and I was profusely sweating and continued to sweat for, like, a good 20 minutes afterwards because I was just so, like, all my little muscles were, like, fired up. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. So we did, like, a little plank and, like, side plank and, and kind of just, like, a basic hold core kind of thing and like I'm not kidding yeah I was drenched and like my muscles were shaking and and that I sometimes don't even get that with some of our big CrossFit kind of workouts and that was a good endorphin rush even just from those little muscles yeah and I I know I'm talking over you but that's the piece that gets me super excited like that you need all of it because like I love Olympic lifting but back to tying in everything that we're talking about mind body connection if you don't slow down with your Olympic lifting you're just going to be using like one large muscle group and some hinges, mm-hmm. right? But if you want to tap into every little muscle that you need to, to perform an Olympic lift, you need to slow down. But then that's where like the Frank Madrano workouts come into play. That's where like for my physical therapy, I do a lot of uh, bodybuilding type workouts to like make the little muscles like work well so that when I'm slowing down and doing the Olympic lifting, which is the larger muscles, I don't know. I just got excited. But... No, it, and that's great because that's how I want everybody to to have the takeaway from this podcast is that – it's it's awesome to, to work out. It's awesome for the mind and the, and the body connection. But the more connected you become to your mind and your body, I mean, because sometimes we're not even connected to the mind, but the more you're connected to your muscles, the more you're connected to your body in general, the happier you're going to feel, the more excited you're going to feel about every single day and what you're going to discover. Yeah. Well, now that we've been talking for a while and I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable, <laughs> I'm thinking about how many people I watch doing Olympic lifting where they're going through the motions so fast. And then watching them, they feel like they're doing a good job, but they're not, like, tapping into half of their body that they could be using. If they just slow down just a tiny bit, they get a way better workout. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to throw that back in there for everybody that, like, less is more. Slowing down and tapping into your muscles as they're intended to be used, you're going to get way more benefit for that mind-body connection than just lifting a weight. 
Oh, I don't without know. thinking without thinking about yeah. it is what I mean. Without thinking without connecting. If you're not connecting, you're just gonna use your body's gonna use your normal patterns. And I think that's what people do. I mean, think about when you go to a, a regular old box gym, right? We can call it whatever we want in terms of you know whatever fitness, right? And you walk in that gym and you got your trainer, right? And and this is folks, this is why I'm really drawn to Meredith because I've had plenty of other trainers throughout the years and you know, I've, I've had a really great trainer in Seattle, too. And if, if you're listening to this, Eric, I, I like you dearly. But, um, and, and you do great. But it's it's the trainers more that aren't hands-on. They just walk up with you and, you and you get on the machine and you just bang out whatever you're doing. You're talking about what you guys are going to do over the weekend. That does diddly squat for your body. I've done it. I've not gotten the results. And that's why people quit. That's why my statistics were um, something about, like, 80% of gym members quit. From if they join in January, they quit by by May. It's because they're not seeing results. They're not feeling that that what I call my burn, but the endorphin hit. It's why people go back to running and killing themselves running, which is not saying that running's bad. I, like I said before, over and over again, running's great if you run properly. Mm-hmm. But it's why people go back to running because they're trying to get the endorphin hit. And oh, I just really want people to understand, like. When you want to work out, don't go into it going like, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, stop the weight loss shit. Seriously, stop that. Because I had to to teach myself to stop that. Because every time I started a new workout program, I was like, oh, I'm going to look so good. I'm going to lose so much weight like the X, Y, or Z person. But you know what? My body looks a lot better now than it has. I'm going to be 40 in two weeks. Happy birthday. Um, Yay. Exciting. But I look so much better now than I did even when I was at my thinnest you know, four years ago, because I'm now starting to engage muscles that I'm like, Oh, wow, look at that thing. I have that thing back there. What's that? Um, so I think the biggest thing here is just, yes, less is more. Don't throw yourself into banging out workouts where you're not paying attention. Don't go in with a trainer who's going to sit there and talk to you about their weekend while you're just like randomly doing the leg extension machine. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to get shit and results. I'm telling you. So, and I was going to, Piggyback on that thought for a second. And one of the things that I get super excited about is helping people hear how their bodies sound to them. Mm. Also taking time to help people understand their own vernacular and how they're tapping into their muscles. Because we both can agree upon we use the same muscles to squat. If we're going to squat together right now going down and up, we're going to use the same muscles. But how you're going to tap in to you activating those muscles is going to be very different than how I'm tapping into them. So that's one thing that I get super excited about in terms of everything we're talking about. The mind-body connection is helping people hear how they activate their body so that they can do it in the way that's for them to do the movement correctly and stacked appropriately. You know, that's what I get super excited about. Um, but I guess I'm just bringing that up, that if you don't have someone that's working with you to help you understand your language and how you move, that doesn't stop you from doing that for yourself. So slow down when you're doing movements and think about what are you thinking about as you're moving. And also paying attention to your thoughts and how you organize patterns or what patterns are you looking for. The more that you can understand your own thought process, the more you're going to be able to activate your muscles um, more efficiently and effectively for you. Um, But that's one thing that I get super excited about. People kind of give me a hard time sometimes because my cues um, are very individual. And if they share that cue with another person, they'll be like, that makes no sense. Well, of course it wouldn't make sense to that person because I was, we came up, we collaborated together (laughs) for that cue for you, for you to understand how to feel your core. You know, that may not make sense to the next guy because they're going to need to hear something a little bit different. I just get really excited about helping people hear and feel their own body so that they can move, um, I don't know, the best that they can move. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's important, the individual cues, especially if you're trying to work out at home in your basement, like on your own, like I used to do for a while. It, I just would slam myself into workouts and do them super fast. And it was like insanity times eight, like as fast as I can go and just boom. But you know, for anyone who's doing that in their basement, really try different positions, feel your feet, feel like try to feel every muscle you possibly can do the technique where Meredith was talking about, instead of, you know, sucking in your stomach, really try to feel that space between your belly button and and your pubic bone. So that bone that's like front in the front of your low pelvis and try to see if you can feel that area and get in touch with that area. And I would invite you to use different words. Maybe sucking in would work mm-hmm. for you and pulling works for another person. But like play with the vernacular of what you're using to engage your muscles and ask yourself questions when you're researching or learning something. Ask yourself questions and pay attention to how you're answering those questions. That will also help you 
feel your body more. Yep, and find your own language because that's really important. We talk a lot about finding your own language uh, because sometimes, you know, I'll say something one way and someone will say something differently, but we're saying the same thing. It's just what resonates more with you. So what resonates more with your body when you're moving and what feels good I mean, make notes, uh, even Tony Horton back with the P90X stuff. So always talking about, you know, make notes about your workouts. I, I have a notebook. It's old school. I do do it. I don't use our fancy Zen planner because it, it's technology. Um, I'm old school. I but have writing stuff. I, I, yeah, I love having an old school journal. And so, you know, get an old school, you know, journal out and, and start making notes about how you feel doing things. I mean, experiment with your body. It's, it's kind of fun. It's really a great way to get to know yourself, but also know what you can and cannot do. A lot of people come to my office and they're like, I want to be superhuman. I'm like, whew, that's a tall order. All right. Um, and this would be the first step in addition to eating healthy, which we were talking about as well. Um, and I think Meredith and I are going to have another podcast on making fun of certain ways of eating. And we need to do that for sure here soon. So. At this point, I want you to be thinking, going back to the beginning, we're just going to recap here just to get you started to start to feel your body. If you're one of those people that you're like, yeah, yeah, I know my body. I've been working out for years. Yeah. I'm going to tell you probably don't um, because I've been working out pretty much since I was eight years old and it only took me until the last like two years to really start to pay attention to my body more. And that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe I've navigated my life this long. And like, I've been somewhat successful too. And I'm like, and now I'm knowing how to tap into even more. I'm like, oh, oh goodness, I'm going to be even more strong. Right? I can't believe I've lived my entire life not tapping in to half of my body (laughs) and not even knowing it. Right. Seriously, I feel the same way. I'm like, damn, I'm going to be 40. And like, I literally, it took me this freaking long to get the stupid weight exercise equals weight loss. No, it means, you know, better body, better health, etc. And just more exploration to, to feel things. So with that, I want you to go back to feeling your feet. And I want you to feel the sides of your feet, those pinky toes, those great toes, those big toes. I want you to feel on either side of that heel. Now I want you to try to keep your weight even between your two feet. Do you feel everything I'm talking about. If not, I want you to wiggle around. I want you to kind of wiggle on those feet until you can feel every single spot of your foot. Now, after you have that there, I want you to try to, don't move your feet, just keep your feet in place. I want you to try to put your heels together. What happens? Well, you're going to squeeze your butt. Feel that feeling of you squeezing your butt. I can guarantee a lot of people do not know what it feels like to squeeze their butt. And these are people that have lifted lots of weights, maybe can deadlift even more than me, can squat more than me. And now this is the first time you might be feeling your butt. <laughs> Sounds crazy, but the reality here is, is, is this, this is life. Now I want you to go up and I want you to feel your pelvis. And this is probably the hardest one for most people. This is where Meredith was saying, maybe the word for you is sucking in, maybe it, it's pull. squeezing, maybe it's pulling and feeling, seeing if you can pull that area below your belly button and above your pubic bone there. See if you can pull it back. See if you can pull it up, play with it a little bit. See what you can do. I like to be able to pull it up in like a little like scoop position. That's kind of fun. Now I want you to go up higher and I want you to see if you can feel your rib cage when you're breathing. And just kind of take a big breath in and then a breath out. See if you can feel your rib cage. Then I want you to see your shoulders are in space. So feel like one of your shoulders is up, one of them is down. Does it feel like one's forward, one's back? Shake that out and try to literally roll your shoulders back and put your shoulders down using your using your middle of your back. That those lats really is what's happening. But trying to take those shoulder blades and pull them down. And then I want you to see where your neck is in space. So is your neck way out in front? Is it way back? Is it off to the side? Shake your neck for a second out and just kind of move it back and forth for a second. Find where it feels comfortable for you without pain. Move your neck forward. Move it back. Move it side to side a little bit. All right, great. So now we've kind of went all the way up the body. The only part that I've left is the jaw, which I've been jawing a lot today. The jaw has a lot to do with neck pain and headache. And the, where your jaw is in space can, can have a huge impact on the rest of you. And so I have people open up their mouth and close and try to pretend like they're going to yawn. Maybe they'll induce some yawn. It did for me. And then you can go side to side there. And, and then just kind of let your jaw go Kind of like try to let it just calm. A lot of us have trouble with that. So that's going to be something for you to think about in terms of working out. All right, now to shake it all out. So now you've just felt pretty much your whole body in terms of coming up the chain. Now pl- there's plenty of other muscles, but I want you to think of that exercise and I want you going forward, you know, 
If you are working out at a certain gym and you have a trainer, tell your trainer about that mind muscle connection and see if they, they'll jive with you a little bit on it. If not, maybe you need to find a new trainer. If you're in Tacoma, come down to town athletics. You'll find Meredith Beard there in the mornings. Um, I'm in the 630 class, just saying, just putting it out there. Um, you can hang out with us. But Meredith is amazing, and I'm sure there's other folks out there too that have this mind-muscle connection, but it's something that it comes from within. And you are the only person that's going to be able to work on it for yourself and find your own language in terms of working with feeling your muscles and your body. And we're just here to plant the seed to get you started, and there'll be more podcasts on certain techniques and things of that nature as time goes on. Am I allowed? I'm going to piggyback one last thing. Yes, piggyback. And with everything magical that you shared, uh, for me, what's re uh, resonated is more is always revealed. When you're talking about your feet, um, I, about a year ago, was listening to one of your podcasts about mindful walking, uh -huh. right? And um, paying attention to my feet. So the journey of paying attention to my feet actually started about a year ago. But um, more is always revealed. And I hear information when I'm ready to hear it. And with yoga... Like more is resonating, um, but definitely feet are so huge with that mind body connection of feeling your body and activating your, your body. Like, yeah, I love all the talk about the feet. Start with the feet, folks. Yeah. Start there, move on up, and just see how it goes for you. And give me a shout. Let me know. Send me some messages. Email me. I'd love to hear some some feedback, comments, etc. And yeah, if you didn't listen to the podcast before this one, you should. It is a great one as well that kind of piggybacks on everything we've been talking about today and then stay tuned we'll have some more podcasts together and talking about food and all the other things that we talk about together here at uh, town athletics so you have survived another episode of the health fix i'm your host dr janine kraus with meredith beard here thank you for having me you have a wonderful day whatever you're doing Thanks for tuning in to The Health Fix, the podcast all about taking control of your health, rebelling against aging, and having fun every day. A lot of patients ask me, do you think I'm aging too fast? So, I created an evaluation checklist for you to see for yourself. Plus, I created a resource guide to help you slow down the aging process right now. You can find it for free on my website, drjkrausnd.com. If you like this podcast, help get the word out to others by liking it and rating it. If you'd like more natural health tips and want to join our Facebook community where I interact daily, click on the Join Group button on our website at drjkrausnd.com.